What up, though? It's your boy OG Tim Wilson, and this is the What Up Though Show. I am live and in a living color, and I am also here with the crew. You know what we do. It's my boys, Big Ed Ways. What the deal is? And I also want to say to all my Aquarians out there, happy birthday to all of y'all. Aquarius season it might be for Pisces now. Uh, no, we're still in Aquarius. Okay, all right, all right, that's good, that's good. Cause you're a fish and I'm a water sign. As for all the old school people that know who Parliament is, ways. Uh, so yo, uh, and know the album Funk and Teleki, not Funk and Uh, so as all I'm saying, Daddy <laughs> <the> Kitchen. <laughs> The ways, what's happening with you, man? Man, not much. I'm feeling more recovered from my little spat with COVID. There he is. He's spatting with COVID. And Big Ed, what's going on with you, man? Uh, nothing much, man. Just uh, I got my my surgery scheduled for my foot, so. Good. That's good. So he had to get surgery scheduled for his foot that he has to have surgically removed from little pork job's ass. What's going on with that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what up, though? Big up, little boy. Up, he's laying under the table right now because he can't move. <laughs> All right, man. So, yo, this is the What Up Though Show. We want to thank everybody for joining us, man, and we want to thank all of our new subscribers. I've got quite a few new subscribers this week. I want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope you are watching all of these programs that we have here, but right now, I especially hope you're watching the What Up Doe, the What Up Doe, the What Up Doe show. Um, on that note, man, I think we go ahead and uh, do this so we can get this party started. How about this? Sounds I'm shooting clear. beer again, y'all. I'm do that's my new thing now. I actually wow. enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself last week when we were doing the other shows and I started shooting beer and shooting nothing but beer. And I was shooting my beer all night. And um I I you know what? It made me I, I made me realize that beer actually hit different when you drink it in just a series of shots. It hits a little different, and I, I was uh, I enjoyed that, and I'm gonna keep that going for a little bit. And plus, it keeps me from the liquor store. I don't want to buy no crime right now, so I'm gonna just go. It keeps me out the liquor store. Okay, I feel, feel you. Me? Feel you. So uh, let's start the show off with a little bit of news about my buddy. Well, he's not my buddy. He's my friend's friend. Nick Cannon. Uh-oh. Nick Cannon has said uh, he's opened up. And he shared his feelings about why monogamy is unhealthy. He says monogamy is, he cites that it is selfish. And it gives a sense of ownership over a person, and he feels like monogamy is not healthy. I am curious what your thoughts are. Um, Ways, you look ready to speak on it. Oh, yeah. He, he can't speak on this sense of ownership over someone. He literally has hundreds of people employed under him. He has a sense of ownership of other individuals. <laughs> so as far as that goes, no, I'm good. Uh, this is without wilding out and him making the occasional gaffe like this. He's kind of a flash in the pan. A flash in the, not a flash in the pan. 
Big Ed, what's your thoughts? I don't know how you can call him a flash on the, in the pan when he's on TV every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's got a whole brand new show that, that he's running right now. Um, oh, does he really? Yeah, a bunch yeah. of middle aged and uh, elderly white women watch it. I like that. All right. <laughs> they probably all his women. <laughs> It's called the Nick Cannon Show, and uh, he, he talk a lot about relate. I don't know how he does it, but he talks a lot about relationships on the show. Um, my wife, she loves the show, <laughs> so uh, and it's a lot more than middle aged white women watch it. It's middle aged black women watching this show too, but uh. Nick doesn't know what the word monogamous means. <laughs> He's never been in a monogamous relationship. And he was with Mariah Carey. But he wasn't monogamous. That's why they that's why he ain't with Mariah now. But, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, just because he cheated, it doesn't mean he doesn't know what it means. I mean, he just, you know, he probably he he's he, he's saying that he doesn't think it's healthy. He was in a monogamous relationship and it didn't work out. And he now feels like it's best for him to let the women look. You know who Nate Cannon is. This is what he said. You know who Nate Cannon is. I'm the guy you were warned about. So if you're involved with me, just know that I'm that I don't believe in monogamous relationships anymore. Or condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I ain't gonna sit here and act like I absolutely hate this man. Hey, Nick, I just Nick, last Nick. thing I'm gonna do is take a relationship advice from a man who hasn't had a good relationship yet. True, <laughs> true that. Uh, Nick needs to find out what a new V word is. Vasectomy. You know. Okay, so so I I. I, I, I I'm gonna cite some some uh, knowledge I picked up from a really really close friend of mine named named Tosif Shaw. Uh, big shout outs to Shaw. Um, and Shaw taught me what because he's from a culture that monogamous relationships are not their culture. Polygamy is their culture, right? Um, and he taught me a lot about that how that works. You know, I mean, they laugh at you. You only got one wife? <laughs> they think it's funny. They they think it's extremely funny. They think this is, you know, we 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 criticize Nick, but when you go to another culture, they'll criticize you. Um, but that besides the point, saying one thing I learned about that though is that you can have as many wives as you can afford. That's something I didn't get about that culture and a lot of people don't here don't understand about the culture. They just know, oh, such and such got so many wives. You know, over here, you can have all these wives. Yeah, but you got to take care of them all. So if Nick is making millions and he can take care of all his kids, I'm not going to knock him for having the kids. You can have as many as you want if you take care of them. If you can afford to take care of them. You go ahead, have seven, eight of them. Have 12. My parents had seven. So, I mean, I'm not going to knock you for having seven kids. Even if they buy eight different I got five, so. (laughs) No, if you can take care of them, knock yourself out. Um, It's just been hard taking care of these five. Yeah, right. uh, But, you know, he's got, like you said, he's got, he's on TV every day. This motherfucker paid Paid to Mariah Carey. He paid forty thousand dollars a week per kid to Mariah Carey, and she she was she was making more money. Than <laughs> yeah, no, I'm she good. Afford a better lawyer. That proves she can afford a better lawyer. I'm uh, sitting here looking at that like, damn, forty thousand per kid a week. That's crazy. So. Anyway, uh, Nick Cannon, it seems to me like um, people ain't buying it. I mean, I, I, I'm with you. 
I'm at 40 some thousand for one kid. As the only single person on the show, I'm with you, dog. <laughs> but my crew ain't feeling you. They not buying it. I'm good. You know yeah, much has much, okay, you know what? I'm going to be the one to say it. I don't care. I'm probably going to get yelled at for this if she watches. Women are a fucking headache. Why would I want more than one headache? Oh, and I can actually I can help you out with that. Shaw helped me out with that too, because oh. as when when your woman knows you have another wife, she's less of a headache because as soon as she argued with him, he said, "I never argue with, I never argue back. I've never had an argument with my wife." As soon as she gets upset, I just say, "Okay, that's okay, that's fine. You win," and I leave to go to my other wife. Next time I'm here, she gonna shut the fuck up. Because she knows all I got to do is leave and go to my other wife. And that's it. She will be good next time I come. She has no complaints. <laughs> there's your answer. There's your answer and there's your remedy. Now, big up to my boy Shaw one time. Uh, that, y'all crazy for doing the shots with me. God, I don't understand that. I'm shooting beer. Uh, anyway, also in the news this week, Adrian Peterson, NFL running back, AP, also known as AD for all day. He was arrested at LAX, uh, Los Angeles airport for uh, assaulting his wife. Hmm. Now, allegedly, on the flight, during the flight on the plane, on the flight to L.A., they had a heated verbal and physical altercation. And when they landed, the cops were waiting for his ass in the airport. Oh, wait. So he walked off of the plane and into handcuffs. Okay. Uh trial is set for sometime in June and uh, you know what's your what's your thoughts man what, what do you think about AP what, 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 what's, what's going on here something he or nothing he ain't learned his lesson the first time women and children are off limits you can't put your hands on women and children the, says the man that's got his foot foot stuck up little pork chop's ass uh, uh, <laughs> All right, little pork chop just want to prove to you that my foot is not stuck in his ass. <laughs> Damn, bro, I didn't know you were that flexible. Uh, all we saw was his face. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. I mean, is that is that your thoughts on it, or Joe? You got anything you wanted to add to, to that? I mean, I know this is more of a ah uh, guy. I'm I don't know. I'm when it comes to this situation, I'm kind of a I need to know the full circumstances. I don't agree with beating the shit out of a female, but if you put your hands on me, I'm going to probably headbutt you. Got a question? Did she punch him first? That's why I'm. That's why I said I'd rather know the full circumstance. I've always, I've always lived by one rule: if you're gonna fight me like a man, I have no choice but to fight you back like a man. So that's the only question I have: who started it, and how did she come at him? If she started it, here's my thing: it's not even just that. To what level did he actually put his hands on? If it was like he pushed her or something, I'm not going to get as upset. But if you, Adrian Peterson's got, that, that man's strong as fuck. If he punched her, that's a whole different story, uh, including slapping, you know. But if he, all he did was push her, I'm not going to be too upset about it. And there's there's no details on that, and it's, it's sketchy to me because um, the altercation was on the plane, on the flight. Mm-hmm. Um, how physical could it have been? Was it perceived as physical when it was actually just verbal? 
um, and violently verbal, maybe uh, hellaciously verbal. And you know how black people argue. You know how white people reject, react to us. You know how white mm-hmm. people see the black man. Uh, so was it just really not as physical as they're making it out to be? Or, you know, I, I honestly, I don't know the answer. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And I don't. So so it's hard for me to. To say what, with, with, you know, to, to put that judgment out there. What I do know is that um, it's not his first offense no. uh, or a domestic uh, situation. So um, although the first time it was just he whipped his kid too hard. Uh, yeah. For all you parents out there, you cannot beat your kids with switches and belts no more. They don't allow it. Yeah, and that's tough for me because you, you can't. I mean, that one was tough for me because. When he was growing up, there was no social media. There was this. There wasn't this. Uh, his dad wasn't famous, so he probably got his ass whipped like that too. And don't see don't see the wrong doing in it. Exactly. He's probably got his ass whipped like that. And now I'm successful. Look what it did for me. Now y'all gonna tell me how to raise my kid? I'm raising my kid as tough as my dad raised me, and help me be successful. I'm trying to help, and maybe it'll help him be successful. But y'all want to judge me? And he, I, to me. There may be a point. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but this is very different to me because it's, it's abusing uh, his, his, his wife, you know, and, and I, I've seen some ugly shit. I've done ugly shit. I ain't gonna front. I've done some ugly shit. And it is hard because one thing's for, for certain is once you put your hands on somebody, it's best to leave. Because it becomes easier to hit them again. Yeah. And things will get more and more violent. And whatever started this one, it's going to take less to start the next one. Yeah. And um, I just, I just, I feel bad about it. I feel bad for him. I feel bad about the situation. I feel, you know, of, of course, everyone empathizes with the woman or the women do, and they all feel bad for her. I empathize with the man, and I, I think he may need some. I don't know. He may have CTE. We don't know, man. The guy needs some needs needs some assistance, and uh, maybe, and you know, it's hard because the double standard is very thick. Mm-hmm. It's very, very thick. It's a very thick double standard when it comes to um, altercations between the man and his woman. Oh yeah, really is. It's a very thick, thick double standard. So yeah, and the way I've all, I've been looking at this is one seeing as we still to this day we don't know the circumstances of what actually happened on the plane tells me, and I hate to say, it, but it's really the best example you can give of a football player who uh in a domestic situation like uh of this situ like this and to me the fact we don't know what happened yet tells me it was not a ray rice type situation where he hauled off on it i'm going to agree uh but at the same time we didn't know that the ray rice situation was what it was until we saw video and we saw a video of him dragging her off the elevator unconscious. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we were okay with it. I mean, we were not okay with it, but we were kind of okay with it. Right. Because it wasn't until we actually saw him throw the punch that it became not okay. Uh, even though, and, and she hit him first in the video. Mm-hmm. But he clocked the shit out of her, and it was like, "Whoa, you can't hit a woman like that." Yeah, but exactly. she slapped him, right? And it was, but it was, but still, the result was, "No, you can't hit a woman like that," and that ended his career. Uh, whereas dragging her off the because he knocked her out cold, but dragging her off the elevator unconscious didn't end his career. No. Seeing seeing how she became unconscious ended his career. Yeah. yeah. Even though we knew she was unconscious because there was an altercation in the elevator. 
We knew that. We knew that was the story. But when we saw it, it was very different. Yeah. But he didn't drag this chick off the plane. That's not part of the story. here, Right. So I agree with you, Joe. It's not the same situation. It's not to that level of assault. Right. Um, but he is charged with assault. So um, on that note, man, I, uh, I got my phone plugged up. So I, never mind. I was I was trying to go for a salt and battery joke and I can't find it. So I'm just I'm just going to go to break and get, move move along um, and we'll we'll be right back. It's the What Up Though Show. Thanks. For, thanks for listening. We will be right back after this. <laughs> Down, what I've done, what I've done, show. Yo, we are back. We are back. You know, I love singing that hook on top of alternate beats. It's just my favorite thing to do on this show. You can actually catch that with damn near any beat. Any, any beat. <laughs> I damn near. It's a chameleon. It fits every beat. Um, speaking of catching a beat, okay, there is allegedly a new super group for me. Really, yes, Bone Thugs and Harmony Ooh. are teaming up with the Dog Pound to form a group called Thug Pound. Mm. Oh, they used to be beefing back when Death Row was beefing with uh, uh, Ruthless Records. They've had a couple songs where they dissed each other. Well, those days are long behind them, and now they are teaming up to form the group Thug Pound. And uh, your thoughts on that one, uh, Big Ed? What's your thoughts? Who's all in Dog Pound? Uh, I think that is. Daz. Corrupt Daz. And I think that's the dog pound. Corrupting Daz. Hmm. That might... I don't know. I don't know. That'd be East Coast meets Midwest. Which is a new... I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that yet. I, I have to hear something from him. What's your thoughts over there, ways? I think corrupt style meshes really well with what Bone Thugs offers. I think they can uh, do something unique. But I, all right, I, I, I'm gonna say it. I don't like the fact that I'm saying this, but it's really the truth. They kind of washed up, both groups, and it, they're basically it's like coming together to make a super group in the hopes that it brings a resurgence to their careers. Because when's the last time Bone Thugs had a CD out? It's been since that joint with Phil Collins. I I know you hated to say that, but I'm glad you did. I kind of hate you said it, too, because you stole my thunder. Because I, too, feel that way. I feel like they uh, are both past their prime, and I think it's a little late for y'all to be calling it a super group. It might have been a super group 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's what he said. It's two past their prime groups looking for a way to feel that, see that light again. And I don't think it's going to work because quite frankly, there's just not a lot of people feeling y'all anymore. No. There is another angle to this, though. They could be showing people that, that it is possible mm. to squash the beefs. Uh, but didn't that happen already when Dre and, and Ice Cube squashed the beef and, and made music together? Mm. All right. Oh, Indeed, uh, that was like they were calling each other. They were threatening each other's life, uh, you know, and then next thing you know, Dre and Ice Cube was on a song together. I think that was that was epic back then. 
I mean, so I, I think that was at, at that time. I know that's before Wade's time, but I, at that time, that was a a, a, a huge merge of of talent to, and, and because they were they were adamant. I mean, no Vaseline. Yeah, yeah. That, that to this day is one of the most deadly songs. They had a whole album, uh, dissing Cube, a um, hundred called hundred miles of running. So they eventually and they got back together and and made music. So I don't know if that's if if and most people don't even rem- remember they were beefing because their beef wasn't really that popular. Well, and I'll be real. Like when you said that there is a beef between them, I'm like really. And to be honest. The only one out of uh, uh, what you call it, Dog Pound that I uh, remember is corrupt. The other dude, y'all said his name. I was like, who the fuck is he? As Dill- <laughs> Daz Dillinger was 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 the guy. I mean, it, it was that was <laughs> Snoop's cousin. Daz Dillinger is Snoop's cousin. All right. Yeah, uh, I still don't know who he is. So I'm like, uh, but corrupt, know I'm corrupt. recognizing. But if you heard corrupt, you heard them both because they were always on songs. They were pretty much on every song together, except for corrupt solo career, and that's not where you know corrupt from. Right. I I, I challenge. I bet you twenty dollars you can't name a corrupt song without Google, a corrupt solo record without Google. So every song you heard corrupt on, you heard dazzle. He was on all of them. Um. But the point is, but- I don't remember their beef. Their beef wasn't wasn't hot. Neither one of them made good songs during their beef. No no memorable songs. No. If we did this record, this classics, neither neither of us would come up with one of those songs. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's mainly because the beef was actually between Death Row and Ruthless. Exactly. It was between Death Row and Ruthless, uh, which really, when you really boil it down, which memorable, it was between right. Dre and Easy E. Exactly. It was between Dre and Easy. That's really what it comes down to. And so the people, Death Row people sided with Dre and the Ruthless people sided with Easy. And yes, in that, in that fiasco, they had some songs about each other where they, they called each other out. But yeah, no, that I don't think that beef was long enough for was big enough for anybody to see no. we can squash beef. Uh, really? Well, because you had Dre and Easy sitting right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean that was that was the beef. That was the biggest beef. That was the beef, really. It was really between Dre and Easy. Mm-hmm. Dre leaving ruthless, right? I mean that was that's what it was about. It was between Dre and Easy, and the rest. Everybody else was just you know my gang against your gang. Yeah, I got I got my boy back. You got your boy back. That's all that was. Yep. Uh, so that's how I see it, and, and I, I'm with ways. I think they both, I think they're both kind of uh past their prime and. Good luck with that. That's mm-hmm. good luck. Look, look forward to hearing the music. I cannot yeah. say the same. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I am. I am. I'm looking forward to hearing it. I'm interested in hearing it. I'm, I hope it's good. Uh, I used to like Bone Thugs. I used to like the dog. The dog when the dog when Snoop first left, the Dog Pound made that one album that I really liked. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it was a really good album. That first one, that after Snoop left the label, uh, they had a really good album. Um, and then I used to like Bone Thugs. So I, I don't, I don't dislike any of them. And they both kind of, even though Bone Thugs was, was uh, Midwest, they were on Easy's label, so they they used to rock West Coast beats too. So they both kind of vibed off the same type of music, anyway. So. It'll be interesting, I think. I think it could be interesting. Uh, you got the traditional rap style versus the Midwest <laughs> rap style. Um, gonna miss everybody. Mm-hmm. So either it's gonna hit or it's gonna miss everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was dead horse now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do this one before the story. That one was for Matt Stafford, who showed up on the podium at the parade. Fuck! Oh, he was Tom Brady drunk. Speaking of which, Tom Brady tweeted out. 
Uh, Stafford, you need to mix in a few waters with. <laughs> Put some water on that shit. He said, mix in. To, take it from me. You want to mix in a couple of waters there, bro. Because he had a big bottle of tequila that he was taking from the head. And he was even he was knocking, chasing it off with some beers. So he got to the podium, sounded like I'm a that is beautiful. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I would like to thank Detroit. <laughs> that is, that is beautiful. <laughs> I love y'all. Thank you for trading me, Detroit. <laughs> I love y'all. Uh, so yeah, he was he was drunk and he he was he didn't take any shots in Detroit. Y'all taking shots in Detroit? He didn't. He probably wish he would would have done it in Detroit because Detroit is a sports town and L.A. is Lakerville. It's not a football town. So no. the, the parade, if you saw it, was very under attended. Yeah, it was empty. It was very under attended. So he was probably out there thinking. Well, if this was Detroit, it'd be seven million people. Motherfuckers would have been coming from all over Michigan for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you motherfuckers come out here in small numbers, but hey, since <laughs> I'm seeing double, hey, but the biggest Matt Stafford story of the weekend was when he, when he just watched a reporter just fall off the stage. That did happen as well. He did not just watch her fall off the stage. He saw oh, it happen. Yeah. He was like, "Wasn't me." Turned around and walked off. But I hear that his his uh Matt Stafford and his wife are paying her medical bills and also buying her new camera equipment. Yeah, after the bad press, and that's good. And he was fucked. He was drunk, man. I, you got to give him a pass. I, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. Y'all know. Y'all know. I'm not the biggest Matt Stafford fan, but I'm giving him a pass, man. The dude was drunk. I'm. He too drunk to be helping somebody. He who gonna help me? He said, "Bitch, we both would have been injured." Exactly, exactly. If he would have went over and tried to help her in the state that he was in, he probably would have hurt himself. I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I believe that. So his his drunk ass would have looked at her mad as hell and said, "Bitch, I'm gonna miss the Super Bowl because of you." (laughs) He already the Super Bowl. Super Bowl was over already. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty funny to me when I heard the speech, and I wish I had a clip of it to, to play for you guys. And uh, it was, I just don't have the kind of time I used to have, so I can't prepare for the show the way I want to. To, to but man, that clip is hilarious. He was uh, he was. Uh, thank y'all. <laughs> 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 I love, I love y'all. Mm-hmm, kid. What? You never know the drunk people can't whisper. What? Huh? <laughs> I peed on myself. All right. I ain't drunk. You drunk? Hey, but it, it it was actually funny watching uh watching the clips of Tom Brady being walked away <laughs> from the party last year. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, and I think. I think uh, Brady having reminiscing of seeing that video, because, of course, he was too drunk to remember it as it happened. Seeing that video, he was thinking, dude, take it from me. Mix in a few waters, bro. <laughs> you- <laughs> Stafford Walking gave Brady like some God. PTSD. <laughs> uh, Ray Charles for a minute. But speaking of Brady, before we before we move on, um. Uh, Is he going to come back? Yes. It seems like it. He's now saying he was forced to retire. His wife. (laughs) I was going to put it out there. You know. He said, you know what? I wear the pants in this relationship. (laughs) He's like, I'm going to go play football. Just like a grown little boy. Tom might be back. Might? No, he will be. And I hate to say it, he might be back with San Francisco. No, he will be. He's he's coming back. My guess is right after the draft. 
He's going to see what San Fran puts out there. Well, I tell you, he, he wanted to go to San Fran before he went to Tampa Bay, and mm-hmm. they told him, no, we're going with Garoppolo. And he said, y'all going with this motherfucker over me? you got to be kidding me, right? Porn star Jimmy G, really? All right. <laughs> I do this twice to me in one career. Yeah, no, they they would they Jimmy G be gone this time. If 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 Tom Brady comes knocking, um, they're going to let him in. Yeah. Uh, because they do realize that damn, if we would have let Tom come, we would have two Super Bowls right now. Mm-hmm. We would have won two Super Bowls with him. Because we came one bad throw away from winning the first one, which Tom would have made and Jimmy Blue. And yeah, Matt Stafford ain't beating the fucking 49ers with Tom Brady behind center. Not happening. No, not happening. Not if Jimmy G beat you two out of three. No. Tom Brady no. would have a weapon he's never had before in his entire career. And that's Debo. Tom Brady would have. And, and our defense is, is come on now. And fuck all the running backs that's on, on the 49ers roster, except for Eli Mitchell. Because that motherfucker was a beast this year. Yeah, he was. And I I, I, I agree. Wasn't he that, like third string, though? Yes. Fourth. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, I know. San Fran has the opportunity to get a second dr- uh, first round draft pick off of him. I think they're going to keep him. Oh, they're going to keep Eli. Hmm. They, well, gonna, they, might, they might let go of Mostert. They, they might. Can, yeah, they're going to see what they can get out of one of them other running backs. I was going to say, because you got three uh, yeah, I mean, number one running backs right there. And, and Eli was a rookie, so I'm going. I'm going to move the veteran, and I'm, and I'm going to keep this young young running back. Yeah, that's yep. true. The lifespan of a running back is shorter, and he's already been hurt the last two years. Mm-hmm. Most of it has. Yeah. So if I got to move on, but man, when he's healthy, though, good lord, most of it is a beast. Oh, he'd be a good fit in Minnesota. But the, but when he's healthy, you know that's the problem. Exactly like Delvin Cook. Yeah. Right. Oh man. Oh man. I wish he was good as Delvin Cook. <laughs> But we're going to take one more break and then we're going to uh, come back and wrap this up with a, have a little fun, man. The fun segment of the show is coming up. I call it the What Up Though Game Show. We'll be right back. You listen to the What Up Though. Hey, oh, right. It's the What Up Though. What up, Joe? What up, Joe? Show. Yo, I like that beat right there, man. That's fine. That was fat right there. I wanted to rap on that one. You know what? That reminded me of like a hip hop general hospital. Wow. This nigga here with the hip hop general hospital. <laughs> All right. Here We're we go, man. Life. That's our dad oh, coming through. It's time for the What Up Doe Show game show. The What Up Doe game show portion of the What Up Doe Show. Uh, yeah, I just made that up. That's why I'm flubbing it. So we just, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks we did, I did a little, some little fun stuff with this portion of the show. And um, we're going we gonna to keep that going. So I have three questions. All right. And I want you to answer them as best you can. And, uh, I think this might get interesting. Um, Big Ed. Yep. Since I'm mad at ways right now for being too young. Uh, <laughs> I'm just mad at kids right now. All right. But man, speaking of which, this kid last, last night, let me tell y'all, this kid was so freaking funny, dude. He was so they just let this boy roam. He was so loud and fun. When his, his pops was talk, saying something, they told him to do something. His pops looked at him, was, was kept looking at him, smiling, and he was walking away and he turned around and said, What you looking at? <laughs> it was just too, dude. When I tell you it was funny, it was like, what you looking at? He, like he was about to come back and fight. I was like, what? And pop just do just laugh at him, man. It was just hilarious. And he finally caught me laughing as the night went on. He looked at me and he said, it ain't that funny, Mr. Tim, but it was it was kind of funny. <laughs> I was like, caught me off guard. Oh, my bad. All right. Anyway, Big Ed, call it in the air. Heads or tails? Heads. 
Wait a minute. Who called that? That sounded like Joe. Uh, <laughs> tells it is. Joe wins. All right. So, Joe. Yes. Question number one. Where is the worst smelling place you've ever been? It is a tie for me. I cannot pick between these two. Um, the CS Chamber in basic training in Fort Jackson, South Carolina for the Army. The what? The CS Chamber? What's that? Uh, tear gas. Basically, you walk into a room that's filled with tear gas. Um, and then the second one is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Damn, just the city. That was a shot. That was a shot. Speaking of a shot, <laughs> have a beer. Uh, Big M. Ah, uh, let's see. Any any bathroom that little pork chop has ever been in? Damn. <laughs> I tell you what, man. <laughs> You made, me, you made me sorry I asked that question. Uh, Why does it smell like teen sweat and shit in here? Uh, but there, there, there's a tie. There's a tie. Uh, the Como Zoo, African hooved animals exhibit. What? Really? Where they keep the zebras and, and giraffes and, and, you know, all those type of animals. Mm. I'm a weirdo. That's I actually think that area smells pretty people. decent. That place smells worse than a pig farm. <laughs> Have you been to a pig farm? Oh, yeah. I got a son that's worked on many of them. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was Janesville, Wisconsin. Where the pig farms are. <laughs> uh, it, was, yeah, it was a cow. Every, in the morning, it would smell like cow. I, and I'll never forget, when I, I was still kind of fresh in the Janesville. And I walked in to, to the grind and... uh. I was like, damn, it stink outside, man. I can't get used to this shit. And this white boy walked me and say, well, it just smells like cow poop. I said, and that just smells good to you? <laughs> you want to know, you wanna know what's crazy about that? In Janesville, they got the pig farms. <laughs> they got they got the cow farms. And then they got mint fields right next to them. And they think the mint fields is finna help the pig farm and the cow farm. <laughs> And them cows, that cow, them cows, you let it let it go, baby. In the morning, you gonna smell it. Uh, and damn, Jamesville, Wisconsin, was a funky place. Oh yeah, <laughs> in the mornings after that, I mean, it was it was weird because once the day as the day went on, it was like the cows just got a morning morning chit habit, I guess. Because as the day was on, you don't smell it no more; it goes away. But in the morning, man, good, 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 good morning. <laughs> um. I grew up 20 minutes away from Janesville, so I know all too well about the smells of Janesville. All right, well, let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to the next question. Now that he's gotten the last word, he had to get the last word. Um, Big Ed, what's the most useless talent you have? My ability to play any video game. I can play any video game and beat it within the first week that I've played it. I don't believe him. Joe, what's, what about you? What's your most useless? What's the most useless talent you have? Uh, I'm able to crush cans with my bare hands. Like? Put the can in between my hands and crush. Oh, really? Yeah, without the whole grass, blasting, yeah. or grasping for leverage. Yeah. Just, just hold it to bah. Yeah. I actually like that. I actually think that's kind of dope. Uh mine is I can piss and fart at the same time. It's it's a wonderful thing. It's, you should try it. It's, it's a fantastic. <laughs> hey, I did it on accident the other day. I was like, uh oh, I'm happy the tub's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no, I, I, all my talents are, are useful. Um, 
Joe, last question. If you could time travel, when would you go? Uh, I would go 60 years into the future. Ooh. Why? I want to see something I've never seen before. Going into the history, but first of all, I'm not traveling back in time. As a black man, that's not a safe journey. Um, but going in the future, you get to kind of see what kind of a future you and your children built. Not even just as a generational thing for your family personally, but as a whole, the future generations. What all that were they able to accomplish? Interesting. Interesting. Well, well, Big Ed? I would actually go back to 1619. Damn. And I would that. Why? I would try to stop the slave trade. If we didn't struggle like that, white people would have nothing to steal from us. They stole everything from us back then. So I would try to stop them from stealing everything. How? What would you do? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but I would try to start a revolution. You're going to go without a plan to stop it. Wait, now, where would you would you do it in, here in America and Africa? How would you stop it on the shores of Africa? I would try to re lead a revolution of, of the people to try to stop the slave trade. Noble, noble, noble thought, noble thought. I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going, uh, I'm not going to criticize you for that one. That's a noble thought. Far more noble than me. Where would you go? I would go back to 1971 and bet everything I have that the Miami Dolphins will go undefeated. <laughs> and come up and then bet everything I get on the Dolphins every game as we progress and get as much as I can out of the only undefeated season in NFL history. And then from there, every sporting event I remember, I'm putting everything I have on that one. And just until I get rich, and then I'll get rich and buy the Lions. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> And that's what I would do, man. That is what I would do. Yo, that is all the show that I have, man. It was a lot of fun. I want to thank you all for joining us. This is The What Up Doe, The What Up Doe, The What Up Doe Show. And I am uh, thankful to have my homeboys right here with me, Big Head and Ways. And on behalf of the crew, we want to thank you for joining us. Peace out, pressy grease out, keep the police out while I bust his knees out, and we out of here like last year. Peace. Somebody say there's a party up in here. There's a party up in here. Yeah, I'm about to do another shot for that party up in here. Hey. Just need to clear my mind.